Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repairs. If you're new to the channel, this is a guitar channel. I am a luthier. I build and repair guitars. I also have a reverb page with a bunch of gear uh, and I'm in a band. This channel is just everything guitar. And today we're going to be checking out a 2011 Fender. Uh, <clears throat> today we're checking out a 2011 Fender American Standard Telecaster. Let's check it out. All right, I picked this one up locally, and it came in this really cool uh, Fender case, like an, an older flight case. I like these cases because they're super light and small. Um, they're just as big as they need to be and uh, they provide pretty good protection. And there she is. So yeah, this is a, a 2011 Fender American Standard Telecaster. And it's in really nice shape. So it's got a really nice one piece alder body and it's got a little bit of a different plate here. So new, normally these tele plates have like the sides, like the ashtray. Um, this one, they've just kind of gotten rid of those sides and it's just a flat plate with uh, kind of the vintage style uh, tuners here. So this provides a little bit better intonation because you can actually move the saddles back and forward each individually. On, this, on the tele ones, it's a little bit harder because they're usually like barrels uh, made of brass. Uh, like the vintage tele ones, so these ones actually do provide quite a bit better stability for uh, intonation. And this has the American Tele single coil pickup, so this is what they put in their American guitars uh, at this time. And one thing that's kind of cool about the controls, so it's got your standard three-way switch, so bridge, middle, neck. Um, it's got a no load tone pot. So basically how this works is uh, it works the same from zero or from one to nine, just like a regular tone pot, but in the tenth, like in the number 10 position, it actually turns off the tone in the circuit altogether. So you're just hearing straight pickup at that point with no tone control at all. And then, uh, so this could be pretty useful in the neck and middle positions. It might get pretty bright in the bridge position, but it's still a cool option to have. Then we've got our aged white three ply pick guard and rosewood fingerboard. This, ro this rosewood fingerboard is nice and dark. And it's got the clay dot inlays. These are medium jumbo frets. This is a 9.5 radius and a 25.5 scale. We've got a synthetic bone nut with our walnut truss cap. And this is a two-way truss rod. And then we also have our staggered um, fender machine head. So what staggered means is, is this position, the, uh, the post is a little bit higher. And then it goes down and down and down. And that's just to keep even string tension. And then we've got our little string tree there. Here's another look at the body. Some really nice wood grain under the uh, three-tone sunburst finish. And uh, this is one is uh, a 60th anniversary model. So you get the cool Telecaster 60 years neck plate. And uh, this neck also has quite a bit of flame in it, which is really nice. One piece maple neck with the skunk stripe. And uh, there's our shield number showing it's a 2011. These guitars usually came with a little medallion here, like a little uh, coin thing that was just glued on. It looks like this one fell off. There's still some residue there, so I'll have to get rid of that. And there's a look at our Fender machine heads. All right, let's get this on the bench and get some specs. Weighing in at 7 pounds, 12.5 ounces. All right, just getting some pickup readings here. So in the bridge position, it's reading a 6.67. And in the neck, we've got a hotter 7.34. And in the middle position, it's reading a 
five five. All right. Width of the nut is a one point seven zero. One point seven zero, and at the twelfth, a two point zero six. Neck depth at the first fret is a point eight six, and at the twelfth fret. A point eight seven nine. So here's a look at the neck profile. It's a pretty standard C. It stays pretty rounded throughout. Fender calls this the modern C. And it feels pretty chunky and it stays pretty chunky throughout. Alright, let's have a look under the hood here. So we'll start with the bridge pickup. So <clears throat> we can see not much. So Fender doesn't really mark their pickups. There's a random serial number on there that doesn't really mean anything to anyone. Um, but we can see our route looks nice and clean there. Let me just see if I can get a better look. So yeah, there's our route. Nice and clean. Uh, it's shielded and we've got our ground wire running from uh, here underneath the pickup and from the pickup cavity. So it's nice and grounded. And the route looks nice. There's some buffing compound in there, but that's to be expected. And then let's have a look at our pick guard here. <clears throat> and there's a look at our neck pickup. Same kind of idea. Um, no branding on it at all, just uh, some serial numbers. And then we have our route for the body, which is looking good. So this one's kind of interesting, actually. You can, uh, it's got a humbucker route for the neck and then an additional route for a middle pickup. So if you really wanted to, you could do a humbucker, single coil, and a tele pickup in the back, like a bridge pickup. Or you could even route that a little bit further and do two humbuckers and a middle single coil um, so yeah a lot of options there but that's cool that they put in this route and uh, left that big enough for a humbucker so that's kind of neat and then we've got another ground plug here from this cavity so this thing is grounded everywhere and then here's a look at our wiring cavity so yeah, we've got our capacitor there <clears throat> and our three-way switch. And this is uh, the no-load tone pot. You can feel it, it just uh, it's no it feels normal and then at the very end it kind of has a little bit of resistance. So that's where it totally removes itself from the circuit. So that's kind of interesting. And yeah, everything looks stock original, nothing's been messed with. And there's a look at the pickup cavity which also has a serial number in there and a sticker and it's grounded here to the body as well so it's grounded one two three four places to the body so everything looks good and as expected and here's a look at our neck pocket so yeah nice and clean and just some factory numbers in there um, the date is April 15th 2011 and for those who don't know, um, this also has the micro tilt system uh, installed on this. So basically what that is, it's a little screw here that you can adjust with an Allen key in the back that'll uh, raise the screw up a little bit. And then that rests against a piece of metal that's been embedded in the neck. And this is effectively like uh, a shim. So if you need a little bit better action, you can adjust the micro tilt system to um, raise your neck up a little bit to compensate for... Uh, a little bit better action. So it's kind of a neat system. And then our neck says May 18th, 2011. So the neck is a little bit older. They usually, usually the neck and the bodies are within a year of each other for Fender. But uh, yeah, just a couple more factory markings. And our neck pocket fit is very nice and tight. So no slop in there. And uh, Fits nice and snugly in there. 
And here's our neck. I'm just going to check the truss rod because I haven't done that yet on this. And yeah, it's nice and responsive, easy to turn. And I liked where it was set, so I'm just going to leave it right where it was. And our headstock's in nice shape. And our frets are in very good shape too. These are the medium jumbo frets. Um, and the rosewood fingerboard is nice and dark. I'm going to go ahead and buff these frets just because looks like it's never been done. And uh, they look really nice once they're done. And I'm going to clean and condition the fretboard. So here's the look afterwards. So yeah, nice super shiny frets. And the fingerboard's looking nice and clean and conditioned. And uh, I just quickly want to go over the condition of this guitar. So yeah, the headstock's super clean. No marks or dings or scratches anywhere. And uh, our fret, our frets have no visible wear, and they're nice and polished. And on the body, yeah, the the top of the guitar is great. No scratches or dings anywhere. Really nice, clean condition. For uh, you know a twelve-year-old guitar, it's looking really nice. And yeah, no marks on the top. On the back, if you catch it in the light in a few spots, there's a, a few slight scuffs in the back. Could have been rubbing against something when someone was playing it, like a belt buckle or something like that. But uh, there's no worming. It's basically just slight finish scuffs that you can only see if you catch it in the light. And the sides are all good. Uh, the only thing I did notice was, where is it here? Oh yeah, this is like a very, very, it's going to be really hard to see, um, but in the dark part here, there's a very, very small impression, just right there, and I think there's one more on the side somewhere, Let's see if I can find it, oh yeah, just right there. I don't know if the light will catch it, but both very small finish impressions, not through the finish. Pretty slight. Overall, this thing is in really great condition. And the case it comes with is like a, I think it's like a 90s hard shell flight case, also in quite nice condition. Okay, managed to get a pretty nice setup on this guitar. So if we use our notch straight edge. You can see that there's very little space in between the straight edge and the fingerboard. So that just shows that the chest rod's quite tight. And then over here in the third fret area, you can see when I fret the third fret, you can see that the string is just resting very nicely against that first fret. So that tells me that the chest rod is nice and straight and this nut is cut really nicely. So we've got good action there. And then at the 12th fret, on the low E, it's sitting at just below 1.5 millimeters. And at the high E, just below one millimeter. So nice and low. That's how I like to set my guitars. And I'm just going to check all the frets, see if there's any buzz or fretting out. Uh, I like to speed up this part. If you want to hear it in real time, slow down the player to 0.25 or 25%. So yeah, nice low action and no fretting out or buzzing anywhere. It uh, sounds and plays pretty good. And uh, I just wanted to point out that the uh, fingerboard edges are nice and rolled, so it's super, super smooth. And uh, there's no fret sprout at all, so it feels really good. So again, we're going to be using the Silver Tone 1957-1391 amp uh, 5 watts 8 inch speaker all original and uh, I'm gonna be making that up with an SM57 I just really like the transparency of this amp you can really hear the individual characteristics of each guitar with it it's super clean uh, and then I'm just gonna use a germanium electroharmonics overdrive for the overdrive it's uh, again a nice 
fairly transparent overdrive. So yeah, I just like the way this thing has sounded in the recording. So I'm just going to be using it on and off. I'm still going to use the reverb, which is right there. This deluxe reverb, uh, just for this video, we're going to use the silver tone. All right, this is going to be fairly straightforward. Just going to run through the bridge, the middle, and the neck, and clean, and then a little bit of dirty. Let's see how it sounds. Sounds very nice, clean, like a proper telly. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on some dirt. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly show the difference between um, the no load part of the pot and all the way to the end. So normally I run my tone wide open on all my guitars, then I compensate everything else with, with other things, just so I can hear the full sound of the guitar. So in the no load part, so all the way at 10 on the tone, it actually takes the tone right out of the circuit and you're just hearing the pickup. So let's just hear how that sounds compared to nine. So here's, 
Here's nine. And here's ten. So yeah, there's a difference. It's quite subtle, but it's there. Um, let's just try that in the neck pickup, just to hear that. So here's nine on the neck. It's subtle, but it does make a slight difference. Final thoughts on the 2011 American Standard Telecaster. A couple things I like about it is uh, the pickups sound great. There's a couple different versions of the Telecaster pickups, and this one really nails it. You can get some really nice twangy tones out of the bridge, and then it cleans up a lot on the neck. And uh, having that no load tone switch is quite useful, especially in the neck position, because uh, you can go right to no tone at all, uh, or no tone adjustment at all. It takes it right out of the circuit. Um, I really like the three-tone sunburst on this. It's really nice looking. It's got some really nice wood grain too. Uh, I like the classic clay dots inlays. Those look great. I love the jumbo frets because it makes it so easy to play and bend. Uh, it's got some nice flame in the neck, which is cool. It's got really nice, rich, dark rosewood. And uh, it's nice and light. You can get some tellies that are boat, boat anchors, but this is not the case. I like the chunkier neck too. It feels great to play. And uh, I like the saddles because uh, you can really dial in your intonation. So I, uh, I spent some time and I dialed in the intonation and uh, it, was a, it was a noticeable improvement over some tellies that I've played that have the barrel saddles. So that's great. Uh, and it still retains all the same telly sound. It doesn't sound any different to my ears having those saddles instead. And uh, the neck plate looks cool. I like that 60th anniversary thing. And the staggered tuners is a nice touch. Again, those are kind of different pole heights, depending on how far away they are from the nut to equal string tension. And uh, yeah, just a really nice telly. If you're interested in this guitar, I'm gonna have it up on the reverb. I've got one specific telly that I'm looking for. I'm not going to tell you. It's going to be a surprise once I get it, but I think I've located 
I'm a, a seller for it, and I think I'm going to be reviewing that one in a, in a month or two. If you decide to take this one, I think you're going to be very happy. It's a great telly. But that's going to be it for today. Thanks for tuning in to Beckler Guitars and Repair, and I'll have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.